Well, you want to go back in time? Check out this beauty, Trek 1000. This guy was new when I first started working on Parker bikes back in the day. Yeah, that puts me old, but this actually puts me back. Let's review a couple of these cool features on this beautiful old school Trek. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary out of used, one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles, hanging with a guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy and on this old bike, and we were really struck this old, <laughs> yeah, aluminum track. Yeah, Illumina Trek 1000, late 80s, I won't even say early 90s, probably just late 80s, straight up. Any case, my first road bike that my parents got me when I first worked at Parker Bikes in the late 80s was a blue one of these, Trek 1000s. They figured, yeah, let's give the kid a entry-level road bike and see if he really enjoys riding. That kind of thing. And I rode it you know, a few times, but lo and behold, mountain biking kind of took over. But in any case, I did ride this similar bike, and it has some, woo, boy, some memories coming flooding back. This was a little bit older than mine. I, it's probably an 87 or so. This is where Trek and Schwinn were just duking it out. I mean, Specialized is starting to come onto the scene. Um, Raleigh was a huge name back then. So when you're looking at the perspective of where this bike kind of fits in the whole genre, well, it definitely fits in there. It has the old school decal logoing, the old school head badge. We'll do a couple close-ups here in a moment, but just want to say that these are one of those uh, cool iconic pieces in the cycling realm. If you've been in the industry as long as I have, you know, Specialized Trek, Raleigh, Schwinn had bikes in this genre and they were built pretty good. And in addition to, these were built in the United States. Um, that's where Trek was trying to, you know, be from, they were still a baby company. They were like only 10 years old or so at that time uh, versus now. And they were bonding aluminum frames. They were welding, obviously, their steel frames where they originally from in the Trek Barn era of Waterloo, uh, Wisconsin. And a couple little things on this guy. And this is where Suntour as everybody knows, Sun Tour now is mostly on forks and a couple other complementary pieces, but they actually did a full kit for the most part for shifting, crank sets. Um, well, this one's a, a Saki crank set, which was very popular back then, but um, like front and rear derailleur. And this actually has Royale comp brakes, which is kind of, you know, unique in itself. I'm going to check the hub, see if they're... This is yeah, Sun Tour, or were these some? Yeah, yeah, I believe they are. And I believe these were a Japanese hub as well. And this is where it gets really interesting. It has matrix rims, where the matrix and the Trek line, they were predatory to Trek before Bontrager. Um, and that was kind of an interesting thing, the matrix... Well, and they also had matrix tubes. I remember the black boxes that said matrix, and that's kind of cool because um, matrix came out a little bit later in the movie. But in any case, they, they, got, they got a beat at that time. Uh, but when you're looking at the bottom brackets of three-piece, the loose bearings or cage bearings headset versus the cartridges nowadays, one inch uh, versus an inch and an eighth, which is most common now. But a lot of other parts, like the brake mounts, are still very similar to current standards. Um, the drop house were a little bit skinnier, though. Uh, because they had a 7-speed, this was a 6-speed dropout spacing, so they even got narrower back then. And this is, oh, well, it's a 700, so we haven't gone too far back to where it was 27-inch wheels, which... I got a frame digging around here somewhere. I got to pull out and show you, but uh, sometime. But anyway, 
these were, were, were pretty cool. Uh, they did, <laughs> this is back when things were more simpler times. They had like four road bikes, <laughs> maybe five, and various sizes, of course. And they probably had maybe two or three mountain bikes at the time. I'll have to start looking up the catalog. If I do, um, I'll post some pictures here that what I found. But uh, they do have a alloy fork, which is, I believe, uh, bonded here. It's not stamped alloy, but it is painted the same color. So it has to be pretty much the same vintage or came with the bike itself. <laughs> a little specialized stem, which is kind of interesting. They wanted it to be a little bit closer back. Well, this guy's in for a tune-up. It was paired with another bike I just finished. Um, basically, just to clean up. They use this as a trainer, that kind of thing, and just wanted to make sure it's in, in tip-top shape. But let's go over some of the crazy little features of back in time. So skewers, starting from the front, used to have these little, little hook things where you can actually twist them. Um, this was an actual, was it some tour on there? Whoop! Wow, look at that. Hey, hey, no lawyer tabs. Check that out. That shows you something. Yeah, let's take a quicker peek at this guy. Yeah, the stamps, like on all of them back in the day, they had uh, obviously in the middle, and this really does need to be cleaned up. Um, oh, it is, it says a sealed wheel system or sealed system. This is where they actually started putting. Um, you know, little washers and spacers, rubber gaskets over the bearings. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that, you know, the progression of time. Oh, Susan. It's, yeah, it's a Japanese hub. Yeah, and these you can repack and get really smooth. And the matrix rim I was talking about, let's see if I can find that sticker. They are made in the U.S. Uh, the metric sticker is missing on the back. Obviously, these are newer tires. They're armadillos from Specialized, but look here. There you go. There's the original matrix decal, and these were made in the U.S. And this is where the hoops are being made in the United States. So basically, they imported the hubs. They laced these wheels up with U.S. rims. This is OEM, so, and the spacing I was talking about, the dropouts here. So matching front and rear hub, Sasan, Japanese hub, then it says Japan right there. Also a sealed system. Oh, this has some like, you know, like sh farm shed fuzz on there. And you got a six speed on here. So with a six speed, you don't need a six speed chain. Um, six, seven, eight speed chains are all the same pitch between. They just change the width here. So that's a little uh, fact point. Um, this is a six speed, a seven speed would take up a little more space. Then the eight speed would be a completely different hub spacing wise too. And whoa, what is this thing? This is not housing. Well, this is their version of housing back then. Um, little kink, so I'm gonna see if I can repair that or leave it the same. Um, you, can't, you can replace this with regular housing. Uh, the trouble is you gotta have a special ferrule to fit into this particular drop. And these were brazed on or welded on to the tubing. And this also has one of these chain hooks where you can put the chain up as you drop the wheel out, which was kind of interesting. Let's see if I can do that one-handed. Oop, possibly not. Not gonna get out of the way, pretty tight. But, and, but you still have the cantilever brakes that had the Adjustment that's been around, but look at those brake pads. Those are old school blocks. A little ten speed. I'm surprised it doesn't have a uh, um, a go ahead flinger that comes off of here and flings off the go heads when you ran into them. And you got a bottom pole front derailleur. And obviously this looks very similar to what we have today. But that's the FX crank, casted alloy. Um, what are we looking at for chain ring here? Uh, I can't really read that. Uh, but matching chain ring. Um, do you have alloy there? That's the model will be stamped on the side here. This is still a 68 shell, threaded the same as the newer Bonner brackets. And yes, USA. And then we go to the shifters. These are friction shifters. Um, so basically 
That is it. <laughs> there is no notching, supposed to the front and back. Um, a lot of purists that do a kind of touring adventure riding like these shifters, but they like to put them on bar ends here. Uh, it really is kind of nice because you kind of just feel your way through when you're adjusting those, uh, those gears, but the case may be is you're not shifting a lot. When you start shifting a lot and doing a lot of hills and so forth, it sucked because I'm called, they're called suicide because you have to basically reach down and look down. That takes your off, eyes off the road. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it does not. I ran into a parked car once when I was a kid doing that, so any case. And another view of that block break Royal Company. So this is your traditional head badge from Trek. I remember having, my parents had a little box of these uh, new uh, from the Trek days in the shop. And looking at, oh, they were talking about like Trek, Waterloo. Oh, let's see, it's double aluminum alloy tubing. So it's aluminum. So here's the other historical uh, bit on this one. Obviously, this is aluminum Trek, is uh, the frame sticker. There's a bike shop for Combs called the Bike Broker. Well, they also had one in Cheyenne and one in Denver. This is one of those first shops in the 80s that actually had multiple locations. So that's a little bit of a historical piece because I remember that shop being around when we had our shop back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, well, they disappeared like a lot of them. Uh, Diacompi, which is kind of like the counterpart of uh, Sun Tour. A lot of the mountain bikes had down with Diacompi brakes and Sun Tour drivetrain componentry. Um, Diacompi was okay on road. They were horrible on the mountain bikes. I mean, it was bad. So apparently they switched to specialized bar and stem. Um, it is a, a, a lady with narrower shoulders, so they probably put narrower bars and shorter stem to accommodate it for, for that kind of riding. So that's kind of the overview of the frame. Huh, and a little bit of, ooh, that's some deep gouging. Yeah, the car rack definitely eat, eating out the frame on that one there. And oh, I forgot to mention these. These are pretty much original back in the day. Look at those pedals, death traps. They would have racing shoes where your shoe would go in there and they had a little plastic clip which slid over this and you tighten your foot down. Basically, you were physically attached to the bike and there is no quick release or sliding out easily without tumbling and falling. This also has, instead of a clamp, it's actually built in thread bolt that actually smashes the frame onto the seat post on that, which is kind of interesting. I remember seeing a, a box full of those too with the head badges back in the day. You know, that memory of sitting in the shop. But yeah, that's a kind of interesting, you know, interesting for sure. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clean up the frame, get some of the scuffing off, try to um, get the drivetrain to be a little bit cleaner. This is a free, free wheel. You don't put three wheel, free wheels in ultrasonic cleaners. They don't have really a seal system that's good enough to prevent that um, erosion of grease in the bearing. So you clean these externally and you re-lube them in a kind of flush system. But other than that, you can put the derailleur on there, the front derailleur and the crank set, not the free hub body, unless you're gonna take that free hub body completely apart, which sometimes is a massive fail when you try on some of this old uh, brakes, maybe. I just want to rinse those off, that kind of thing. Hubs definitely could, or wheels can definitely use a, a tank wash and a truing. It'll be interesting to see if those wheels came out of true. So yeah, let's check out after I get these cleaned up. Here we have the pedals all cleaned up. Look good, but they're going to go with clipless on this one for a trainer bike. You got the trailer. Look at that Sprint Sun Tour. Got it all clean and ready. Same thing for the front derailleur. Put a little bit of ceramic coating on it too when I did the rims. Also the chain rings. It's like a 50 what? It's a 5240, which is a crazy combination compared to nowadays. That was pretty common back then. Clean some bits there. Uh, the free wheel, I was able to take the free wheel off of the wheel itself, hub body, and be able to clean that as well as the chain. Looking at that, this is what it looks like 
your free will on there. And I cleaned the trude and also ceramic coated the wheels and the hubs. You can see how amazing those have turned out considering how old they are. And there's the front there. Pretty amazing. Uh, so also cleaned and ceramic the frame. You can see that high gloss to it. It's really pops. Coated the brakes a little, clean those up. Got the old school decal, the bike broker. Also the Trek sticker, really clean, but looking at the actual decaling, it's pretty good. And lo and behold, we have the head badge. Look how shiny that is. Well, Right now, it's about quitting time for me, so I will resume this in the morning. And well, we'll put this to bed and put this all together once we're fresh and bright eyed and bushy tailed in the morning. Well, it's finally morning. Yeah, a little slow start. Uh, it's more closer to early afternoon, but in any case, this is how I roll. I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to just kind of put this back together and just like you, just standing right there, working on a stand next to me, this is gonna be the concept for this tidbit here. Basically, we're going to the finish line on this. Uh, I need to reassemble the wheels, uh, cassette or the free wheel, and put the tube in the front tire. Also, throw on the cranks, derailleurs, and string it up and do a little bit of adjustment. Actually, these bikes are fairly less complicated than the newer ones, obviously, because they've added a complication over the years. Uh, but uh, it should go fairly smoothly from this point on. But I'll just jibber jabber and do my thing, and you're just going to hang out with me while I finish this up. Let's dive into this. First and foremost, I'm going to get the free hub body back on there. And we did a little zip tie trick to uh, hold these things in place. And what I'm going to do is just basically cut the zip tie, get that out of my way, and make sure I key these back in place to where I originally found them. And I'm not doing a lot of these. This should go. Pretty easy, er, <laughs> fit in place, maybe, <laughs> come on. Apparently that spacing needs to be snapped in there. I will do that with this in my hand, so. Probably why I had problems with it going on or off. Oh, there we go. Maybe. There you go. Snaps in there. And next one, I'm going to match it. Same spot. This one doesn't have. Apparently, these guys are really tight. <laughs> so I can probably use a light tapping motion to get these guys in there. Next bit, these are not keyed, so they just kind of go where they're supposed to go. But you're going to have to figure out what makes the most sense. Line up the teeth as closely as possible. Slow down a little bit better. Okay. 
just like that. And last but not least, but what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of grease in this guy because it threads right onto there. Make sure I catch that thread correctly. And this I only should only have to use one chain whip to thread it back into place. <clears throat> ah, like so. We got our Freeha body on there. Yay! That came back together all nice and clean. The frame's been polished and detailed. I'm gonna try to get the rest of these bits on here first so I have room to throw my tire on. So we're gonna start with the bottom bracket plate. Get that going. Find my tools that I didn't put away. <laughs> yeah, so these were interesting. This one actually a stamped a little truck on there. It's kind of cute. So I assume it has to go this direction because that's where the cable would go. Oop, let me make sure you get that thread in there smooth. Nice and clean. On to the crank set. These have the different style. They're not the bolt, they're the nut style. Which means use the nuts to tighten these guys up. And And these have nice little dust caps out of alloy. Back in the day when they made a lot of things out of metal and not as much as plastic, even though there was still plastics being used. These are a little bit nicer guys. Get if I went the right direction. Come on. Okay. Yeah.
So voila, here we have it. All strung up. Yeah, everything turned out to be actually not too bad. Nothing really kind of scary. Obviously, I needed to still take it for a test ride. But at the end of the day, this is still a solid little bike. I mean, for just recreational riding and just having some fun or just putting on a trainer, absolutely. It cleaned up beautifully. Those piece of pictures here just momentarily uh, in detail, hopefully with some sun if we get some today, then highlights some featured pieces of this particular beautiful beast back in the day classic. Absolutely. Trek 1000, I would say probably 87. Probably the year that my parents opened their shop, Parker Bikes, and back in 87. So it very looks very vintage of that nature. Um, yeah, the Trek 1000 was the lower end, but hey, back then, lower end was still pretty decent. Made in the United States, full aluminum frame, and they bond their aluminum. So everything's drawn or cast and then kind of glued together. That was a trademark of Trex for a good decade or so. And they also integrated carbon tubing in their bonding process as well on some of the mid-90s type stuff. Uh, my dad had the 2500, which was a couple years after this one, with full Durace, Shimano. And it had polished aluminum, lugs and chainstays, but carbon fiber mainframe. Pretty slick back in the day. You could definitely recognize those bikes when they hit the road. Um, and they're timeless classics, let's just got to say. This fits within that vintage, also with the... Bike broker sticker. I mean, come on. That's just the whole classic and the bike broker sticker had the big wheel a penny loafer type um, Logo on there and they had I think three locations one downtown Denver, Colorado one in Fort Collins, Colorado And I believe they did have a Cheyenne location or a Laramie somewhere in Wyoming, but in any case Hey, well, thanks for hanging out in the garage with me. Check out these beautiful pictures and again until next time Have a wonderful day Thank you.